most people think of the beginnings of Canadian English as um, as rooted in the loyalist um, emigration to Canada. So after the American Revolution, uh, the loyalists were the American colonists who uh, were opposed to the revolution and fought on the British side in, in the war. And so when the war ended um, and the peace terms were very favorable to the revolutionaries, uh, the, the loyalists uh, realized that they had to get out. Uh, and one of the ways in which the British government said thank you to the loyalists for their loyal service was to uh, guarantee them passage out of New York City, which was the last uh, bastion of British defense in the war to Canada. They didn't all go to Canada, but many of them did, and particularly those from the Middle and, and New England colonies. So there were large numbers of loyalists, about 45,000 by general estimation, um, that, are, that went to Canada. Some of them went directly by sea to Nova Scotia and, uh, and also to uh, what was then the western part of Nova Scotia, which then became New Brunswick. And others went by an inland route, basically up along Lake, Lake Champlain um, into what is, is today Quebec. But the uh, governor of Quebec realized that settling large numbers of um, English-speaking loyalists among the French-Canadian population so shortly after the British conquest uh, would not be politically wise. And so most of those uh, loyalists were resettled further west in what were called the uh, the Western Townships, uh, which became Ontario. But many people assume that uh, one of the reasons why Canadian English today is a fundamentally North American variety, unlike, say, Australian English or New, New Zealand English, which have much more in common with British English, is because of that loyalist influence that, that created a common origin with American English, because um, the first English-speaking Canadians, at least the first substantially large group of English-speaking Canadians, were actually ex-Americans. There was a huge migration of people directly from Britain following the end of the Napoleonic Wars, um, and the peak of that immigration was the Irish potato famine of 1847. Uh, the immigrants began coming right at the end of the uh, of the war, and, and that immigration continued up to the middle of the 19th century and was much larger than the Loyalist immigration, probably talking about something close to a million people um, who came directly from parts of Britain to Canada, and they came from all over Britain. So there were uh, the, the most numerous were Irish. Uh, uh, people from both Northern and Southern Ireland. Um, but there were also a lot of English people, um, and they tended to come from the West Country of England and from Northern England, and Scottish people as well. So it was a mixture of different British regional origins, but and they would have spoken regional types of British English, not the kind of thing we think of as British English today, which is based on the London um, regional accent that became standard British English. They would have spoken Yorkshire dialects and West Country dialects and Irish and Scottish dialects. And these people moved into most of eastern Canada, from Ontario through to Newfoundland, and would have mixed in with um, the population that was already there. So whether the modern features of Canadian English are due more to the original loyalists or more to the British settlers that came in the 19th century or to some combination of those, uh, of those influences, but somehow out of that mixture came a fairly homogeneous kind of Canadian English um, by the time of Canada's Confederation in 1867 that was basically North American in character. So where you know, Canadians have much more in common at almost every level with American English speakers than with British English speakers. Following the establishment of a pretty homogeneous um, kind of Canadian English in Ontario by the end of the 19th century, the western part of the country was opened up for settlement. That was, of course, a long historical process, but it fundamentally began with the arrival of the railway, of the Canadian Pacific Railway uh, in the west, which allowed the opening up of most of western Canada to settlement. And that settlement came from uh, four different regions. There were uh, con a continued immigration of British people. Um, there was also the beginning of substantial number of Europeans uh, arriving, so Germans and Scandinavians and, and the Ukrainians and Poles, and then also Americans uh, who came up. Uh, basically, the United States uh, was also expanding westward, and as American settlers ran out of new uh, good farmland in the United States, many of them began crossing over into Canada to take up homesteads uh, on the prairies. But the largest group, both numerically and uh, the most influential at a, in a social sense, were Canadian-born people who moved west. And the largest group of those was Ontarians, who would have brought their Ontario English with them. And uh, that Ontario English, in a slightly modified form, became the 
the main historical input to the development of Western Canadian English, and that accounts for why we have such a high degree of homogeneity across Canada, all the way from Vancouver to Ottawa. I was out and about, lost in the dark. I was out and about, lost in the dark. I was out and about, lost in the dark. I was out and about, lost in the dark. Anxiously pacing, alone in the park. Anxiously pacing, alone in the park. Plagued by a memory vaguely in sight. Plagued by a memory vaguely in sight. Plagued by a memory vaguely in sight.